Watch this video if you want to become an old rider. Here are 10 growing problems motorcyclists are facing so that you can know how to avoid them. Blinding headlights are a rising problem on US roads. It's not because regulations have changed, they haven't changed in decades. It's actually because of larger vehicles like pickup trucks and SUVs having taller headlight placement and also the changing hue of lights. Cars are getting bigger and bigger, about 25% bigger. SUVs and trucks made up about 75% of sales in 2022. Bright LED lights have increased from 50% in 2020 to 75% in 2023. If you're wondering what the difference between halogen and LED lights are, halogen is yellow tinted and LED is blue tinted. And since our eyes are more sensitive to blue light, LED just looks brighter. There is adaptive headlight technology available. That's where headlights actually narrow the light coming from headlights rather than scattering them all over the road. It's actually pretty common in other countries, but not in the US because of government red tape. Resolving this on a corporate level could take years because we're waiting on the government here in the US and that could take a while too. So what can you do about that? Can you avoid riding at night altogether? Or what about at dusk or sunrise when more accidents happen? Can you look towards the ground or even off to the side and use your peripheral vision to see where you're going? If not, pull over altogether. If you just put your hand out, put your hand out right now and look right at your hand. I bet you, you can describe what is around you without looking away from your hand. Now, don't just start riding like that. It's That's just an emergency suggestion when you got no other choice to try to see without being blinded by the light. The National Safety Council reports that cell phone use while driving leads to 1.6 million crashes each year. Phone motion and screen interaction while driving went up 20%. By the way, that also goes for riders using their phones while on a bike. With our phones mounted on the handlebars, the temptation to look at a text pop-up or I don't know what y'all are doing, but people are doing it, taking their hands off the handlebars while riding. Okay, I am guilty of looking at my phone while in the car, but on a bike, what are you doing? Some phones have a do not disturb feature. Like if you have an iPhone, scroll down, and then right here it says, do not disturb. I have that on right now because I'm filming this video. I don't want to be bothered. So you're going to click on that and look at your options. You got do not disturb, work, sleep, driving. You could put driving on and that'll stop not only you getting from text, but if you try to open up your phone, it'll say, are you done driving? Guilt you into not opening your phone. So maybe that can help some of y'all. And what about cars on the road that are using their phone? What can you do about that? So just make it an effort not to ride in people's blind spots. You know how a lot of semi trucks will have a sign on the back that says, if you can't see my mirrors, I can't see you. Similar thing with cars. If you can see the person's face in their mirrors, then they can see you. If not, they can't. But also remember, some people aren't looking. Some people aren't checking their blind spots or they're on their phone and they're swerving. You don't wanna be so close to their car that you can't get out of the way quickly. So just keeping a safe distance. That way, if they do accidentally stray into your lane, you're not sitting there like a duck. 2023 was the world's warmest year on record since 1850. And it's been 47 years since we've had a colder than normal winter. Riding overheated is really similar to riding tired, which has been shown to have similar effects to riding when under the influence. With heat comes fatigue, dehydration, which can impair your decision-making, sweating and heat discomfort can become a distraction. You might even be inclined to wear less gear. <gasps> to stay cool on a hot ride, those cooling vests actually work. I used it on my 1500 mile ride from Arizona to Sturgis in August. It was very hot. That's kind of like when I used to wet my shirt in the sink before riding home from work in the summer, but that only lasts about 30 minutes. Cooling vests really do retain the water for a while, keeping you cool. One of the riders on the Medicine Wheel group ride made two layer bandanas where you could stick ice inside of it. I filled that up every gas station shop. So I had cold, icy water melting on me, whether it was on my chest or my back, wherever I put the bandana and the cooling vest. And it, it made for the ride, not perfect, but definitely bearable. There have been increasing motorcycle sales. And with that, 
rising motorcycle theft. 2022 is a third year in the row that US has seen these numbers increasing. In 2022, about 4,500 bikes were stolen every month. Motorcycles are stolen most often in the summer, which makes sense because more bikes are on the road. And California was the leading state for motorcycle thefts with almost 10,000 bikes stolen in just 2022 alone. The most common bike brands stolen in order were Honda, Yamaha, Harley, Kawasaki, and Suzuki. Although this could also just be what brands are more common. Bikes and Beards has a really cool video where they try breaking into a bunch of theft protection for your bikes, which was really reassuring because then that told me that this little dislock brake that I have is as good as I thought it was. I may have said it to private because I did something embarrassing in that video, but I have or had a video on my channel where I forgot the key to my disc brake lock. So I had to call a locksmith because otherwise I was gonna be stranded hours from home. And when I get there, he's like, oh, I take these off all the time. It'll take me 15 minutes. It took him two hours and broke several of his drill bits. Obviously he had to destroy mine. So I ended up getting another one and they're not that expensive. So I'll be sure to link it down below. He said this was the hardest disc brake lock he's ever had to break into. I also use a portable GPS. So see this bike right over here? It was sitting outside my old shop and when I walked in, they said that it was originally stolen and the owner had a GPS in it. He ended up tracking down the thief, pulling his gun on him and making him wait there until the police came. Pretty sure that's illegal in many states, if not around the world, to pull a gun on someone and be a vigilante. So don't do that. But he got his bike back. He was able to track it down with the GPS. I've got a discount code I'll share for you in a minute with the one I use. So you can track your bike if it ever gets stolen. But call the cops, please. Don't go being a vigilante over here. I've been using this brand for four years. So when I reached out to them this year and asked them to be a sponsor, they said yes. This is the old iteration and you really want the new one. Not only is it so much smaller, but the battery is also rechargeable. I'm not gonna tell you where on my bike I hide this, but it doesn't just have to be a bike. It can be anything. If you wanna stalk your wife, put it in her car. You could put it in ATVs or boat engines or trailers. You just gotta download the app and then you pair the GPS with your fob to your phone. And then if your bike's ever moved, it'll call you and then you can track it live to tell the cops. Discount code DOODLE10 will be valid for about another month until May 31st. But even if you miss the discount window, I mean, it's worth it for your bike, right? It's, it's still gonna be linked below. Winter storms have been increasing in frequency and intensity since the 1950s. I experienced just how bad this could be on my cross country trip last year. I had to dodge dust storms, blizzards on the West Coast that hadn't seen snow in decades and tornadoes. The flooding in California was so bad and that area was just so unprepared for it. I was crossing the country so that I could train with Jocelyn Snow on my bike. And there was so much flooding in that area, our class was almost canceled after I had already spent six days breaking my butt trying to get across the country in time. Motorcycle accident fatalities have increased about 20% in the last decade. Granted, there are more riders on the road, so that could be part of it, but I'm gonna share with you the data so that you don't become another statistic. A large majority of accidents are caused by lack of experience. People who never took a basic rider course, unlicensed riders make up about 36% of fatalities. The most common types of accidents are actually caused at intersections other vehicles turning left in front of a motorcyclist. Last week, I did a video on the most dangerous roads in the world. I've also done a video on the most dangerous roads in the US on the Motorcycle Destinations channel. Can you guess which one was the most dangerous in the US? Not Tail the Dragon with its Tree of Shame, but I-95. And that primary cause for accidents was actually reckless driving and speeding. That being said, the bright side that people don't talk about is that according to the informationinstitute.org and a separate study by the National Highway Safety Administration, your chances of getting in a motorcycle accident are less than 1%. So as long as you practice safe riding habits, like not drinking and riding, decrease your speed, try to avoid riding when tired, you're already decreasing your chances of being in an accident by almost half. You can see more about that in this video where I break down motorcycle accident statistics. Sure, traffic is less than pre-pandemic, 
but it's still increasing at a really rapid rate, maybe even quicker than some of us are used to. So just remember those statistics I just mentioned. More than 45,000 US bridges and 20% of our roads are in poor condition. I know some of you around the world have way tougher roads than we do. In the US, public funding for infrastructures has tanked by over 40% in recent years. Dangers of poor road conditions include something wrong with the signage, maybe it's not there or it's covered in stickers, maybe they are too reflective or there are potholes. While the cost of buying a motorcycle has remained relatively the same for a while, everything else, the cost of upkeep, gear, certification, that's all gone up. I try to get as many discount codes for you all as I can, so if I have any, they're gonna be listed in the description of all my videos. I'd love to give you a discount on gas and oil, but I don't, I don't have that one. Since 1977, the cost of motor oil, fluids, coolant, they've all gone up by about 700%. Inflation's a real thing. Okay, do you feel hopeless now? <laughs> yes, you can argue that a lot of negative things have increased, but so have a lot of positive things. Motorcycle safety technology only continues to increase. Anti-lock technology, tire pressure monitoring systems, airbag clothing, our gear, our bikes are all getting safer. Population of riders are increasing, which means more people riding, a growing community. There's more social media curated groups focusing on more education and just getting together. Also, more and more women have been riding. Just over a decade ago, the percentage of riders that were female in the US were about 13%. That number has climbed to about 20 and some sources even say 25%. Adventure riding is the fastest growing market. That tells me that more and more people aren't just buying their bike for an accessory. They're buying it for its practicality because they want to ride a lot and they wanna ride far. They don't just want to look at the bike in their garage or ride it to a restaurant. They wanna ride it and they wanna ride it hard. And since the pandemic, motorcycle purchases have only continued to increase. More and more people are seeing how cool this is. The more of us there are, the more that other drivers will notice us and the more we can help each other out making sure we're all properly geared up and continuing training after the basic rider course, the more those things happen, the safer it will be to be a motorcyclist. Now that you're gonna become an old rider or older rider, to make sure that you don't quit riding like 80% of people do in their second year of riding, watch this video, 10 Biggest Lies About Motorcycling next.